Good morning, everyone. Welcome to day three of our block six. This is the last unit from my end. I don't know how many pending with you, um, you know, but this is the last unit here. Um, and only three more days in our last block. Very, very small unit, only two assessment. And um, the PPT is also small. The learning guide is also small, you know. Um, so happy days. Yeah, only two tasks. Yeah, finally. So that's why, you know, um, use this time this week to catch up with your work. Whatever pending work you have, please um, try to finalize those. Yeah. Okay. Um, the name of the unit is Apply Business Risk Management Processes, PSB OPS 403. <clears throat> now, risk. Risk in anything you do is always there. You can minimize it but you cannot always avoid it, can you? Yeah? If you're crossing the road, risk is there. Yeah, like I said uh, on Monday, yeah, anything can happen to anyone. We can minimize it by observing the traffic light and, you know, observing the vehicles, being more conscious, right? But even if you're conscious, can you 100% say that there is no risk of you being hit by a car or a truck or a van? Anything you do, right? We are taking enough care while we are eating food. But still, can we assure that the food we are eating, right, or air we are inhaling will not give you any cross-contamination and you'll be super healthy all the time? Not necessary, right? Risk is always there. So if you start a new business, okay, start any new venture, launch a new product, risk is there. Risk has been always there and will be always there. It's just how you can minimize it and reduce its probability or possibility to a very minimal stage. You're sitting in the classroom. There could be some electric shock while you're operating those power plug. Yeah, you got a power strip. I mean, it's been tested, it's been safe and everything, but still has that happened, isn't it? Yeah. So... Whatever we do at a business level, at an organization level, will also attract some risk. You're learning a new software. You have asked for funding. What if your funding is not get approved? Of after you get your funding being approved, the fund is not utilized properly. Or you utilize properly, but the output is not as ex expected. You're launching a big product campaign. You launch a new product. Before launching, you need to do your research. You spend some dollar doing the research, hire someone, you know, which product should we launch or what will be the dollar value of the product, the market price of the product. What does your competitor do? How can you be more unique? You need to launch a YouTube ad campaign, Facebook campaign, newspaper ad, the billboards, you know, when you uh, drive past on a highway, right? Um, and the advertisement or at a bus stop, train station, you know, all these places, right? They spend a lot of money in marketing. Only after that, people will be aware of the product. And there is a chance that people will buy the product. If you don't market it, simply sitting on a supermarket shelf doesn't sell itself. Right? You need to market it properly. So having invested so much of dollar, time, value, everything, you know, resources, there's no guarantee. There is always some risk if the product is not sold. What if people don't like the taste? So this is what we are going to start. How do you manage risk process management processes? Okay. What we will cover here. So first of all, what is a risk? We kind of know it. Identifying risk. How do you identify risk? Like I said, risk is everywhere. It's just us. We have to find and identify the risk and try to minimize this. Analyze and evaluate risk and minimize where possible. Treating risk, monitor and review risk. Once you analyze, oh, risk is really, really big, huge risk in what you are doing, right? Then you treat the risk, trying to minimize it. For example, okay, let, let me talk about something. Um, let's talk about the yesterday's uh, assessment or scenario where we were having $60,000 to spend on starting a new um, cafeteria in the in the Sydney uh, city center, right? CBD is called Central Business District. CBD, Central Business District, that is in a city. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
now you invested everything, you hire the good people, you are ready for launch, but no customers are coming because someone else spread, um, you know, um, the bad word about the company. Oh, he employed someone who is like this and they are doing nonsense stuff and they are unethical or something in the background which you are unaware. On the launch day or even for one week after the launch, no one is coming to that new restaurant. Right? So you identify and evaluated the risk. Okay? The risk is from the competitor. Someone else spread that bad word about the new branch. Okay? You evaluated the risk. Now you treat the risk. How do you treat it? You start giving some free coffee, having some good words in a community. Maybe ask your friends to come in in a shop. Once people see the movement in the shop, more people will join. Yeah. Once you get some free customer, you know, first free customers, you know, and then you will get more crowd. And once you attract more crowd, then your risk of that, um, you know, word of mouth, the negative word of mouth is kind of minimized or treated. So you treated the risk, then you monitor and review risk. You have to ensure that that risk is minimized and it's not coming back. Otherwise, you have to repeat the whole cycle every time. Same thing from um, COVID example, contamination. In any business venue, they have to treat the site using disinfectant, antibacterial wipes and mask and this and that. We know all the protocols, yeah? right, to minimize the cross-contamination of COVID virus, coronavirus, right? But even by doing that, can we say that we have 100% treated the risk? Not 100%. We try it at our level best, okay? And that's why we monitor and review it every time. Whenever there is some outbreak, whenever there are some cases spiked up, uh, we'll review it again. Hey, let's be more cautious now. Um, always have a mask box at the counter, at the table, you know, everyone can grab it, you know, um, ensure there is less contamination, the food is like this, the benches are clean and all that thing. Once everything is clean, everything is normal, then we don't um, review that every time. Yeah, so this is your review and monitoring of risk. Okay, topic one, we talk about what is risk. When a business is operating effectively, it is serving the needs of community. This may be because it is providing a service people want to use, or it may be because it makes available product to the community wants or need. Further, a business may employ Oops. Further, a business may employ a number of people improving their economic well-being and security. When you employ someone, like you are employed, that boosts up your economic well-being, isn't it? We get money, we get salary, right? from which we take care of our basic need, taking care of our family, their education, their health and everything. So that's why your well-being and security is increased. When a business is not operating effectively, the flow of goods of service to the community may be affected and the employee may experience economic hardship. Just imagine your company tomorrow says, oh, sorry, but we are closing this branch and it happens very commonly in here. Some bank, I mean, the employees are absorbed somewhere else, uh, mostly, you know, they wouldn't hire someone new, they will hire the previous employee, uh, but you know, they have to change places. You might be working in a bank branch, which is closer to you, 10 minutes drive, and they shut down that branch, right? And they transfer you somewhere else. Okay, that may be one, two hours drive from your place. Okay, then, it's a hardship time for you. And if they don't employ you again, then you have to look for a new job, maybe with the same pay, maybe the compromised pay, again, a hardship time. So if the business is not operating at its greatest capacity, then everyone gets that blow, not just the business. And that's why you have to do your best to serve to your organization in the best possible way, right? Whatever you are doing, do it with integrity. The business will survive and so is you. If the business does not survive, then forget about you will have a job. It doesn't matter if it's the government department. Yeah, do your best, do your good. Yeah, do it with integrity. 
There are many reasons that this may occur, but one of them is poorly managed risk bringing about nebetic continuity. If you don't manage the risk, you know the risk is there. You have to manage it properly. If you don't, then it's going to have some definitely um, impact um, on the on the business. Yeah. Why risk matter? Dealing with negative events after they occur is almost more costly than the cost of avoiding them in the first place. And the costs are not always abstract as a loss of dollar value or on a computer. So what we are saying here is, if you know there is a risk, try to treat it in the first place. You knew there is a risk. Again, let's talk about COVID. You know that there are getting a lot of customers these days. You have to increase your sanitized process. Wipe table after every customer leave if it is a restaurant business, right? Um, have some, um, you know, hand sanitizer, mask and antibacterial spray, wet wipes, dry wipes, you know, paper towel, whatever way you can minimize it. Try to minimize it. Have some good ventilation throughout the room, maybe air humidifier or whatever ways you can minimize it. You know, risk is that if you don't do this, obviously someone will catch COVID. It could be your staff member. It could be another customer. No moment that happens, you lose your reputation. Why? Because they say, oh, okay, it wasn't very tidy and that's why we got um, got the virus, right? So it's always easier to take care of risk in the first place than in the later phase. And it's just not loss of dollar value. You're losing customer, losing the prestige, and it's very hard to earn them back. Failure to deliver product may have a knockoff effect causing the failure of the business. Continual failure to pay up invoices may drive other business into financial hazard. You have bought something from some businesses. Obviously, they will ask some money for it. You say, oh, sorry, I'm having a hard time. I didn't get my money. We are in loss. I'll pay you after three months. So they will pay hard time. And if it discontinues, right, then the whole economic cycle will get disrupted. This is what happened in the um, great uh, uh, financial crisis we call it GFC. Yeah, anyone knows what is GFC? Anyone? Okay, that's not good. Give me one second. Yes. It triggered me from this point. Continual failure to pay up the, if you don't pay money for the things you have bought, doesn't matter you are a customer or you are a big industry, that causes the whole cycle blockage of other industry as well. Employees who find themselves suddenly without a job can incur life altering negative consequences, such as inability to pay mortgages. I have one or two or three property. What if I lose my job, right? I won't be able to pay my bank. I'll say, do what you want, but I don't have money. Right? If I can't take care of my bills, you know, I mean, it won't happen like that. I have my plans and everything. But just, just give me an example. Yeah, like I told you guys on a Monday, right? Um, I'm the numbers man. Yeah, so I have my planning. I mean, to the foreseeable circumstances, touch wood, everything will be fine. Yeah, and based on experience and everything what I have accumulated, even if I won't have a job, I can find a job in two weeks' time. That's for sure. Yeah, I can assure on that. But just give an example. If someone doesn't have a job, what will happen to their mortgage? What will happen to their rental? During COVID time, it happened. Many, many rentals said, oh, we lost our job. We don't have money. We are going through economic hardship. And government passed a temporary legislation that you cannot kick someone out if they're not paying the mortgage, if they're not paying the rental, that's it. I mean, they have to prove that all this thing is true and all this. But anyway, yeah. In a severe situation, loss of life may occur. The Space Shuttle Challenger disaster 1996 cost the lives of seven American astronauts. While not exactly a business scenario, but it can become a case study in the risk management. This is a video, but I'll play it after a while because then I, again, I'll have to stop sharing and all that, okay? Cool, so everyone got a fair understanding of what is risk, yeah? Now, important part is identifying risk. Before you can manage risk, you need to be able to recognize and document risk. 
Risk can be present in many aspects of business and some may not be immediately. To assist in identifying and analyzing risk, most medium is to large organization will have a formal procedure in place. And that's why we always get that fire testing done. Yeah, uh, we always have that mock drill. Why? We want to minimize risk. It will be too late to train you for the drill during the actual fire, isn't it? And that's why we have a mock drill. And during our last meeting, I told our operation manager roles as well that we need to train the employees and where possible students as well how to operate the fire extinguisher. Simply that fire extinguisher sitting on a wall does not help. If you haven't seen one, if you haven't used one, especially staff members, I mean, we can't really expect students to know it, but the staff member like Corinna is there, she should know how to use it. If she's trained enough, she should be able to use it. Yeah. And then what's the use of that? Okay. There may be some legislative requirement that you have to follow or the standard that they must comply with. I'm living in a, in a kind of apartment, like just two-story apartment. We got a downstairs parking. There's all these water lines dedicated if there is a fire, dedicated to only fire risk, not the normal water line. Many of the supermarkets that we visit or hyper malls or malls that we visit would have a screen before we enter. And they say, I mean, it's blank if there is no fire. Otherwise, that will say blink, blink, blink. Fire do not enter, fire do not enter. So it won't let you in the store if there is a fire. And then try to kick everyone out. Yeah, so that's a risk management process that the super mall has ex accepted. The process of risk identification requires an understanding of types and a willingness to examine situation objectively. Further, steps in bold require examination of operation, normal if undisturbed, places where it's simply interrupted, everything is fine. Finally, the process of documented risk must produce clear, concise output, absent any contradictory misleading information. Simple and clear, no misleading information. Who remembers how do you operate a fire extinguisher without asking Google? Anyone? I had taught this at least once or twice. Anyone? No? Nah? Pass and fail. Yeah, we know pass. Yeah, pass and fail. P A S S. Pull the pin, aim at the base, right? Swipe. Squeeze and swipe. Yeah. Squeeze the nozzle and swipe as you go. P A S S. That's for the fire extinguisher. You know, word pass, yeah? As a kid, we would be so happy if we get a pass grade, <laughs> if we pass the subject, yeah? We wouldn't like the other one, the fail one. Yeah, PSS, don't forget that, simple enough. Pull the pin, aim at the base, squeeze the nozzle and swipe as you go, that's it. Okay, types of bricks. It can be financial. We know financial risk very well. Operational risk, when there's uncertainty regard policy or procedure and situation that arise on a, you know, some, some unforeseen circumstances, resulting in significant different outcome or what otherwise will be expected. Health and safety, biggest risk. Yeah, we are living in a COVID era, influenza era, yeah. And there was something, rotavirus as well, before a while. Yeah, is it still there? R-O-T-A, rota? No? Someone told me about rotavirus last year. Was there a deadly virus or some most infectious virus last year in Solomon? Or this year early? Apart from COVID. Oh, okay, still here. That's Rota, right? Okay. See, I don't have that bad memory. 
Okay, I knew someone told me about rotavirus. Okay, that's good. That is under control. Yeah, we're just talking about health and safety and some some names of some health and safety risk. Yeah, they are highly contagious. You know, um, monkeypox, for example. We had chicken pox back in days. Now it's a monkeypox. Have you heard of monkeypox? Yeah. If not, you should. Yeah. It's just one person carrying the virus and that will pass on to many others. Same thing happened in Corona as well. Yeah. Okay, security, poorly managed spaces, a lack of clear chain of possibility or poor resources allocation as well as securities are being present in organization. You need to keep everyone inside and equipment safe and secure. IT, clear IT policy. APD's IT policy is that they won't allow the laptop to be taken at home. Yeah, you have to leave that here. Do not install anything. I mean, it's blocked by the IT department. You can't install it without the ID password of admin. I can't install half of the things on the laptop. Yeah, I need to have permissions for that. Project, many large project has sub project in a progress to which they assign teams. And when deadlines are not being met, a project may risk of failure, potentially rendering all investment in a project board. Bigger project, remember we talked about strategic plan, then there is an operation plan, then there's a team plan, yeah? So a bigger plan or project will have some sub projects as well. How do you identify risk? So identifying risk typically involves several steps. Some of them is choose the category. How severe is the, what category is the risk here? Yeah? Preliminary discussion being an area of risk right me to exist. Examine the process. Look at the business processes taking place into category. For example, finance include both playing invoices and invoicing customer. You give money to the suppliers who has provided you gift and you charge the customer whom you are serving. Isn't it? Yeah. For example, if you take example of APDC, APDC will be paying the supplier who has provided the books, the laptop and everything. And at the same time, they'll be charging the customer, students like you or your company. That okay, since you are enrolled, pay us the money. Or maybe some government grant. I don't know how they structure in terms of finance, but there's always some inflow and there is some outgoing. Yeah. Take notes of trend. What trends are apparent in each process? Absent any change in the practice or output is a general trajectory of result whatever as relevant area of fix expected to be positive, negative, or steady. You have to analyze that, okay, this standard basis. Positive risk, negative risk stays the same. A risk of fire might stay the same. It can go down in some winter month and can go up in some summer month. Flood, same thing. Likelihood of flood will go up when it's a rainy season. Otherwise, they are normal or low. Points of failure, are there any places in the process you are examining that could be considered a single point of failure? That is a point process where a single significant error or unexpected event could cause disproportionate damage and possibly leading to process failure. Okay, um, let me explain in terms of, um, again, COVID and then I think of some, something else. If you don't wear mask, a single thing can shut down the whole course, isn't it? For a few days. Let's say someone is having COVID, they didn't wear the mask, they pass on to many other people, including staff member, everyone was isolation. APDC course shut down for a few days or weeks. Yeah, depending on the severity. Just one point of thing. 
Another one is Okay, let's talk about yesterday's scenario where we were considering starting the new restaurant. You need tables, right? Since in past you didn't pay a few of the logistic person on time, everyone had an impression, oh, so-and-so company doesn't pay on time. That means you don't get decent table of furniture for the opening of restaurant. No one is ready to supply your goods. Without tables, you cannot open the restaurant. What will you do? One single thing can ruin the whole project to fail. Yeah. All clear so far? Okay. Let's look at an example scenario. And in, I mean, read this. I don't have to talk about it. Okay. Read this, please. Yeah, this one makes sense. A simple coffee ordering wasn't done accurately. So if you say, oh, I want Brazilian roasted beans coffee, you know, for example, and you say, oh, sorry, I run out of it, right? Because the staff member who used late didn't inform that this is the last one, or the person in charge didn't inform the ordering officer, or they don't have the manual system to run that. Yeah, that causes this failure. And then it's all about the risk category. Okay. I'll give you another example. Okay. Say, so for example, APTC or Karina keeps all the charger in one box. I'm not sure how they are keeping it, the laptop charger. And it was all packed, kept in a room, but it wasn't labeled properly. So while they were moving goods of the old laptop and replacing, someone accidentally took that wire box, laptop charging wire box, and placed it somewhere else. So when you guys come in the morning, the laptop lasted for two hours. Normally, it lasts for two or four hours. Yeah. Then you need to charge it, but you don't find the charging cable. What will you do? A simple misplaced labeling or not taking care of the precaution or processes or not keeping in the right place will stop the running of class. It could happen to me as well. Just imagine me being there. I can't charge my laptop. That means I can't teach. I can keep you guys busy, but not the training. Yeah. yeah. And then you can find the risk category and the what process and everything. Yeah. Okay, so we covered two points. Next, analyze and evaluate risk. Once the risk have been identified, the process of analysis can begin. 
that will typically require the input of expert in the areas where a significant risk has been identified to give an appropriate evaluation. Once the risk has been analyzed and evaluated, it can be documented according to the policy. Maybe you are not the right person to analyze risk, then ask an ex expert. Yeah, anything about COVID, if you can't take care of it, ask the expert, ask the doctor, the medical scientist. Yeah, and they will tell you how severe this could be. Same thing about, uh, you know, the other viruses or rotaviruses or monkeypox. Yeah. Or influenza. Like influenza is there for a while, so everyone kind of knows everything. But any new viruses, yes. Analysis of risk must be involved, must involve stakeholders, anyone who is involved in the thing, as their input and willing participation will be crucial in the later implementation of risk mitigation measures or treatments, early engagement with stakeholder and therefore has potential to significantly reduce the medium term cost. Okay, the expert stakeholder will give their opinion and that will minimize any possible impact of this, um, the risk thing that might have, yeah. Then you have to some risk category, get categorize it. Let's do some. Risk can be categorized according to the likely impact. As a part of assessing that impact, however, it's crucial communication with individual groups and organizations who have the ability to provide context and detail. In this section, you will consider stakeholder input. Further, negative outcome may not necessarily occur in the same business unit as the risk, which again, we will see, okay? So something happened in one stage, and because of that, you see the impact on the other part. One example of for that is, if the finance department does not pay the supplier on time, you're looking, let's talk about restaurant, you're looking to buy something, but the finance department didn't pay the furniture supplier on time. And it doesn't have impact on the finance, it has an impact on the operations. Why? If there is no table, you can't start and run the business of opening the new cafeteria as we are seeing it yesterday. So one department didn't take care of the risk properly has an impact on the other part of the business, not necessarily in the same one. Again, you need to have stakeholder input. That's fine, nothing new here. Okay, you need to document the risk. There can be a risk register or risk mitigation or minimization register as well. That was a risk. We did this and the risk was minimized or treated and there is no harm now. Yeah, it can include the stakeholder, the category of the risk, the impact and risk metric. Okay. List your risk and their category, list the stakeholder, highlight the possible negative impact, provide a risk profile and give a descriptive analysis of the um, risk when you are documenting them. Next comes, once everything is done, you analyze, you documented everything, now it's a time to analyze or treat the risk, sorry, yeah. Once a risk has been analyzed, recommendation can be made. Of course, just because of a recommendation has been put forward does not mean it must be acted upon. Each prescribed treatment should be evaluated on a basis of strength and weakness. However, once agreed, the responsibility of implementation should be handed over to relevant personnel according to policy. There is a risk. You ask the expert, what do you think is a solution to the risk? There'll be five different opinion, for example, yeah? Someone said, oh, you must do it like this way. The other people said, no, 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 no. We should do it this way. The third one will be totally different. Yeah? Which one should you follow? Or should you follow all? We have to weigh in the options. What does the first one say? What are the strengths and weakness of that opinion? Same as the second, same as the third, fourth and fifth. Once we weigh the strength and weakness, again with consultation of the stakeholder, and then a decision has to be taken and implementation or treating treatment should start. The medium term consequence of risk management may involve cost uh, with the benefit of engaging successful mitigation only becoming apparent later. 
This may create organizational resistance to actually implementing prescribed restrictment. Controlling risk, control, control. Controlling risk can be thought as an intervention to that modifies existing processes. Your identification of risk involved examining business processes and your analysis of identified risk might have revealed a risk of high enough to justify expanding resources to mitigate the risk. Okay, what we are saying, everything is fine, but you actually need to control it so it doesn't happen again. Yeah. Taking action. Measures to control risk will be highly dependent upon the situation and the context of the risk. Some example of how you can control some control measure, additional training. If something happened, um, let's talk about the same example. I know Karina can't hear, so I can um, take her name. <laughs> Karina didn't uh, label the boxes properly about the laptop charger because it's easy to understand example. Um, again, it's an example. Yeah? Um, and someone take the laptop charger. And there was this, the training stopped and everything, right? If it's normal training, that's fine. I can cover it some other day. What if on that day, some Australian High Commission is visiting and there's like an important day or really devastating effect, right? Or there was some presentation which was to renew a PTC contract with, with TAFE Queensland, something like that. Yeah, then what would happen? Right, once we analyze, once we treat it, everything moving forward, the employee has to be trained. So we have to tell Karina, do not leave boxes without label, right? Always charge the laptop as far as possible. Always do this, like additional training. Yeah, if there is some blunder happening. Regular reporting, additional reporting specifically tailored to address the risk can help treat the risk, you know? If you know it's been reported, okay, like a checklist thing, right? End of day checklist thing. Before uh, she leaves, she will have an end of day checklist where she will fill it, send it to the immediate supervisor. Have you checked all the doors are closed? Yes. Have you locked the computer trolley? Yes. You know, have you closed all the rooms and handed over key to the responsible person or security guard or whatever, right? All that thing, a checklist. And that report has to be sent to the supervisor before she leaves on that day. Yeah, something like that is called regular report. Then workflow changes. Some risk can be mitigated or eliminated by changing the steps involved in a particular workflow. Removing or isolating the steps that involve the most risk may be the most effective treatment. Sometimes you just have to remove the risk possible. Yeah. All risk measures should be put in place in cooperation with stakeholders where possible. In the case of external risk, however, it may be suitable to look at eliminating risk entirely if it is external. Yeah. A company may change their supplier for a particular component if their existing supplier becomes unreliable enough to represent the risk. It's also important to realize that while some risk can be eliminated, in other cases can be mitigated. Heavy mining trucks, for example, can be dangerous to work on regardless of the safety precautions. Finally, monitor and review risk. After treating, it is not simply enough to assume that it will be always follow. Yeah. Instead, the outcome of a risk treatment must be monitored against success benchmark that have been previously agreed upon, right? Reviewing them continuously. As you approach the final, um, it should be apparent that the interview is in under it, sorry. Risk must be monitored to the ongoing basis. Depending on the severity of the risk, um, you have to monitor them daily, weekly, or once in a while. Yeah. Evolution is a constant thing. This is just because progress of monitoring the viewing risk should be continuous through all stages of risk management. In fact, revisiting previously identified risks is crucial to the success of the risk management. If there was any previous, and that's why documenting risk is essential. You document risk, 
right? So the person reviewing will not just review the recent one, they will also go back and see, oh, that was a danger once in the past. Let's see if it's still or it's been treated and forget about it, yeah? So you should set a time frame for any risk scenario to be re-examined. Decide on, decide on what represents a successful outcome of the risk control and examine either a produce part of risk measures or themselves or look at how the output is processed at the risk exchange. Again, I'll play that video in a bit. And finally, reviewing the risk. The risk control measure produce meaningful change in outcome and matrices and corresponding reduction in risk for a given process or scenario. Below are some ways you can make a valuable assessment for the success or failure of a set control measure. Positive outcome indicate increase in a positive outcome, such as increased positive productivity, increased output. Yeah. Negative one uh, showing an adverse effect and if any feedback at the risk processes will indicate from your stakeholder what can be done differently. Okay, any questions? Okay, then I must play this two video that I have. context. In a project setting, for example, the context of risk management relates to the stages of the project management life cycle.